Tonight, city leaders and protesters are reacting after what started as a night of peaceful protesting turned into violence and destruction in downtown Madison. Thank you for joining us. I'm Amber Noggle. A Wisconsin state senator says he was attacked last night and two historic Capitol statues were brought down. The forward statue was dragged down State Street and a statue of a Union colonel ended up in Lake Monona. Both the forward statue and the Hans Christian Hegg statue have been recovered. Now, this is all stemming from the arrest of a protester yesterday. Yesterday. They released this video that police say is Devonier Johnson. Although the man identifies himself as Yeshua Musa, he follows a person into Cooper's Tavern on the Capitol Square. He had a baseball bat and shouted into a bullhorn. When police got there, they attempted to arrest Johnson outside of the tavern. They say he resisted. After a brief escape, he was taken into custody. This footage is what led to what happened last night. Officers arrested him for disorderly conduct. We have a team of reporters tonight having you covered. Tony Galley, Emily Fannin, AJ Bidepour, and Carly Murata are all standing by covering different angles of what's unfolded. First, we go to George Smith leading us off tonight. George, what's the status of the cleanup near the Capitol right now? Well, Amber, things are pretty quiet here right now, and behind me is the spot where the forward statue used to be across the street at the State Historical Museum. They are boarding up a window, so the cleanup process is continuing right now. Now, late this afternoon, Governor Tony Evers authorized the National Guard to come here and support local law enforcement in Dane County. The governor said the Guard is being activated to protect state buildings and infrastructure. Now, the Capitol Square was not the only area that was damaged. County Executive Joe Parisi's office released this image of a firebomb tossed through the windows of the city county building. Parisi said it landed near the 911 center and started a fire inside that building. Dispatchers had to be evacuated and the backup 911 center was activated. But certainly when someone throws a Molotov cocktail into a building that's occupied, um, that's certainly a, a recipe for potential disaster. Fortunately, deputies were on the scene you know, quickly and were able to put it out. Now, the city engineering department also posted these photos of damage to their offices. They said no one was working when this happened. Now, Madison Mayor Sasha Rhodes Conway has not spoken about last night's events, but she released a statement this morning saying what happened last night in Madison was far from peaceful and exceeding dangerous. We need to separate First Amendment protests from those engaged in criminal conduct. People engaged in violence and criminal conduct against people or property on the streets of Madison will be held accountable. Now, our crew covering the protest came across Democratic State Senator Tim Carpenter, who told them he was attacked by demonstrators as he was taking video of the protest. This is what he caught on camera during that attack. Delete it. Give me my phone along. Delete it. The next thing you know, I'm getting five, six punches, kicked in the head. Shortly after that, he collapsed. Our crew worked to get in touch with Capitol Police and stayed with him until paramedics arrived at the entrance of the state capitol. Now, the senator was able to get into the ambulance on his own. 27 News spoke to Senator Carpenter this morning, who told us he's fine now, just shaken up, and Capitol Police, of course, are investigating. Now, lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are denouncing violence and destruction. Capitol Bureau Chief Emily Fannin has you covered on what they want. Emily? George, both Republican and Democrats tell me they are heartbroken and frustrated over the actions that left two iconic statues destroyed outside the state capitol. Now heading into night, GOP leaders say there must be law and order. Republicans gathered outside the capitol today to tour the damage. GOP leaders called out the governor, Madison police, and the mayor, saying they failed to respond appropriately to put an end to the violence. Assembly Speaker Robin Voss said police should have arrived on scene earlier to prevent the damage and hopes things will look much different tonight. We have gone from peaceful protests all around the country to rampaging on State Street where nothing was done, rampaging now at the Capitol where it seems like nothing is being done. Something has got to be different. It makes me mad. Only on 27 News, I sat down with Governor Evers moments after he announced the Wisconsin National Guard will step in to help police, saying he will make sure what happened last night won't happen again. I understand people's frustration, uh, but we have to channel it in a way that's a lot better than last night. Uh, that, that just doesn't work and people are going to get arrested. People are going to get hurt. 
I also asked the governor whether or not he supports mass arrests during these protests. He doesn't think multiple arrests need to happen, but believes police know how to handle these situations best. Evers said he does want to see police be more engaged tonight to make sure these events don't repeat themselves. All right, Emily, thank you very much. And those protests began peacefully last night. Demonstrators were letting out their frustrations about a black activist arrest that we showed you earlier in the newscast. Now, that arrest happened outside of Cooper's Tavern. Tony Galley is live there tonight, and he spoke with people involved in yesterday's demonstration. Tony? George Cooper's Tavern is closed tonight. Tuesday, it was the center of this powder keg incident. And across the street tonight from Cooper's Tavern, there's a sentiment supporting Yeshua, Devonir Johnson, the man in the middle of what happened. Now, Johnson, with a bullhorn, was outside the restaurant among diners decrying racism, his later arrest being condemned by his supporters. As you saw earlier, video shows Johnson went inside the restaurant with a bat, you Using the bullhorn addressing patrons when he left, Madison police had arrived. And video shows several officers getting Johnson on the ground trying to arrest him. Activist Alan Robinson went on Facebook on Tuesday to urge people to come down to the Dane County Jail to protest Johnson's arrest. Robinson's, Robinson maintains this was police brutality. It took five officers to violently apprehend Devonair. They didn't de-escalate the situation. Right. Um, clearly, the eight hours of de-escalation training that the MPD has wasn't enough to suffice in that situation. They had him down pinned like how they had George Floyd. What do you mean? Now, Alan Robinson says he feels no responsibility for the statues removed, windows broken after his call to swell the protest. He says he regrets Senator Carpenter was assaulted and wants those responsible held accountable. Now, Devonir Johnson has yet to be charged in connection with what happened here at Cooper's Tavern. State officials, nonetheless, uh, are holding him in the Dane County Jail. Johnson is on probation for a previous theft conviction, so his fate in the hands of state officials and the district attorney. And protesters tell me tonight Johnson's continued incarceration could prompt more action in the streets. George? All right, Tony, thank you very much. And we are still waiting to hear from the Madison Police Department about their response last night. We are being told that Acting Chief Vic Wall will be available, available to speak with us a little later on this evening. Now, meanwhile, uh, the sheriff of Dane County, David Mahoney, said that Madison is, quote, not safe. A.J. Bypour is standing by with more on that part of the story. A.J.? George, so far today, the Dane County Sheriff is the only local law enforcement official who's answered any questions about the police response or lack thereof to the continued violence last night. You can see the windows still boarded up on the side of the city county building. Sheriff Dave Mahoney says he supports much of the protesters' message, but adds what happened last night will only make it harder to achieve those reforms. Today, Mahoney singles out two prominent activist groups in Madison, Freedom Inc. and Urban Triage. He says while the groups may not have directly destroyed property or battered elected officials, they have the influence and tax dollars to steer protesters toward more productive action. I call on them today to publicly, publicly disparage these acts of violence because it is their silence and failure to denounce and stand against these extreme acts of violence which endanger the lives of the very people they advocate for. This afternoon I talked to April Kigea from Urban Tria. She says she's in the process of trying to set up a meeting with Mahoney regarding last night's violence. Her statement was she wishes people would be as outraged about police killing black and brown people as they are about the violence that occurred last night. The Sheriff Mahoney says his office is prepared to respond much earlier than they did last night should Madison police need their support later on this evening. Reporting live in downtown Madison, AJ Bayapur, 27 News.